you know, the media is starting to do a very good job in the way they're covering Donald Trump. But I think that the one part that is still missing is they don't go into the evil portion that governs many of the policies that Donald Trump is attempting in order to get this economy open. What I want to do is I want to show you this piece and then we'll take it on the other side. And universities and states are beginning to take legal action against the Trump administration's new immigration policy targeting international college students. The ICE mandate directs international students enrolled at universities to take at least one in-person class or lose their visas and leave the country. But many schools have announced they are switching entirely to remote learning this fall. Acting Deputy Sec Secretary of Homeland Security Ken Cuccinelli said the policy should motivate schools to reopen despite a spike in coronavirus cases across the country. Now setting the rules for one semester, which we'll finalize later this month, um, that will again encourage schools to reopen. After those comments, Harvard, MIT and other schools started legal action to protect thousands of their students. Now California is joining in on the fray, becoming the first state to file a lawsuit against the new policy. It is the state's 86th lawsuit against the Trump administration. Joining us now is California Attorney General Javier Becerra. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, always good to have you. Thank you for being here. As a state, California has the most international students in the entire country, 185,000. You call this policy cruel, but you also call it arbitrary. What, ex what exactly is the legal action you're taking and why do you think it's going to be successful? Well, because it's arbitrary and therefore it is placing a lot of people not only in danger of losing the opportunity that the federal government just three months ago told them they had, uh, but it's also dangerous. Uh, arbitrarily, it causes danger not only to those students, but think about the professors that would be required to be uh, now in person in class, think about all the students that would be you know, susceptible to contagion. And so it's not just arbitrary in flip-flopping from a previous order that said that these students could uh, continue forward through online classes, but it's arbitrary in that it didn't take into account the dangers that it poses, not just to these students, but to everyone who would be around the classroom setting. Here's what, what I, I wish uh, they would have noticed. If you, li if you listen to what Ken Cuccinelli said, Ken Cuccinelli said, uh, well, we are doing this to force, in effect, these schools to open, encourage them to open, coerce them to open. They are not asking any of the fundamental questions in this particular locale. Can they open without causing harm? Can they open without getting other people sick? Can they open without putting the risk of teachers at health, without the risk of bus drivers at health? If you are in a stable condition, you can understand, yes, you can consider opening because, yes, the kids need to be in school. And, yes, until people or kids go to school, having the parents go to work is going to be a difficult task. But you have to ask, what is the underlying issue for Donald Trump? Why he's doing this hastily? Look, if we had shut the whole thing down, let's say in late February, early March, and we had taken full control nationally, it was a national action to take care of coronavirus, then it would be easy then to say, let's, we are ready to open back up this country, we're ready to open back up and kids go to school. Why? Because we would have had the rates low enough that we could have had contact tracing. Where whenever we get a fire, we could uh, or a brush, little brush fire, we could put it out before it became a forest fire. But we didn't do that. We wanted the stock market to stay going up, and in the process, we've killed, we've murdered thousands of Americans. So let's be clear here: this is a time when Americans are supposed to react. It is your life over Trump's success. It is your life over Trump not accepting that he's an imbecile. It is your life over Trump somehow thinking that he's really a good president of the United States. I'm Egberto Willis, host of Politics Done Right, an independent news program. I post several news videos of interest every day. I ask you so kindly to subscribe to my channel and please leave me some comments. Thank you very much.